Hi everyone and welcome. JJ Walsh here. This is Seek Sustainable Japan special episode in the middle of the day. Welcome. It's nice to have you here. And today we have two very special guests talking about a new docu series that they are doing a Kickstarter for. They've already done the first episode called We Exist Japan. We're talking about LGBTQ plus issues, diversity, inclusion, so much important stuff. Thank you so much for joining Felicity and Tiffany. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having us on JJ and lunchtime podcasts are always nice. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, JJ. Thank you for joining up uh, for inviting us. It's good to be back on your show. <laughs> yeah, right. Tiffany, you were on my show ages ago. Felicity, it seems like ages ago too. Seems like ages. Time passed so quickly. Um, you guys are both right in it right now with the Kickstarter. How's it going so far? We have been so humbled by all of the support. It's been just under two weeks and the community has really come out strong behind us. Our friends, our family, our community, uh, community groups uh, like Kyoto Journal, Writers in Kyoto, Fukansai, so many people reaching out and offering support. It's been, it's been a ride, but it's been wonderful. That's fantastic. Now, just to give the audience a little background on you guys, uh, Felicity, you are a photographer, a filmmaker, and this for this project, you are the editor and director, is that right? That's right, exactly. Um, yeah, so I've been based in Kansai for the past 18 years, and I've been in Kyoto for the last eight and i've done a feature film and i've got a youtube channel and then this is yeah this is quite a big project uh that i'm working with my collaborator tiffany on how did you guys meet to start this project i want to oh. i want to hear that after <laughs> tiffany introduce yours give us some background on you first this is great that you reminded me about how we met because the reason how i how i met um Felicity, i met her one time through a as, um, it was during COVID. It was during pandemic, and um, there was a filmmakers event going on online, and that's how I joined because I started being. Um, I started one. I wanted to meet the local um, people from the filmmakers industry because I started being an actor, and then that's how where I connected with Felicity. But then we didn't really connect that much, and then I saw her interview on your show because I was watching your show, and then I was like, oh my gosh! Like I didn't know that you know she lived in Koyasang and all that and I went to Koyasang and I remembered mess uh, commenting on while you guys are talking that it just resonated with me and then and then that's it like from then like we just got connected and then we met in person when I was visiting in Kyoto and we did collaboration and now the documentary it's been amazing so it's all thanks to me it is. I'm so happy to you are a that. connector. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love it. I'm just putting links here. So, uh, what's next, Japan? Felicity, that's your YouTube channel. Uh, we're next, Japan. Oh, we're next, Japan. Sorry, I wrote what everybody you? always, yeah, no worries <laughs> at all. <laughs> and the Kickstarter. And let's uh, remind people in the beginning and the end about the Kickstarter, because that's really the main reason we want to mm -hmm. get the plug out right now. So tell us some of the dates, some of your targets. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So uh, our Kickstarter is going to finish on the 19th of November. So we have a little bit more time, but uh, it will it'll disappear in a flash. And then uh, we're going to be doing some screening events. Uh, after the Kickstarter is finished. So in the first week of December, if you're in Kyoto, especially the 5th of December, we'll have a beautiful screening at uh, Ryukoku University uh, with a, a full cinema. And we'll also be screening at Doshisha University. Um, we're gonna be screening at an international school. So the, the first week of December, we have lots of screenings. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, the Kickstarter, we're gonna be sending out more rewards this coming week as we're getting sponsors who are coming on board and giving us wonderful things like umeshu and shochu really premium japanese spirits we also have um it's not on the page yet but coming soon is matcha from wazaka which is just south of kyoto it's actually where uji tea comes from so you can get some premium japanese tea very soon 
as well as some great online rewards. So I'm going to be offering uh, like a one hour uh, mentorship with documentary filmmaking and Tiffany is offering uh, a tea experience in Tokyo as well as some life coaching um, events. Is there anything I've forgotten, Tiffany? You there said was it all. A kimono, <laughs> oh, kimono dressing uh, and photography, isn't there? Yes, the kimono photo shoot well. experience that we're also um, doing. That looks amazing. Um, so I've got the Instagram QR code on the screen right now. I've put loads of links in the chat. We'll, of course, come back and talk about that more. Uh, great to see Natasha with us and some other people joining for our lunchtime chat. Welcome. Great to have you guys here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the whole concept of we exist. Mm. What What is the need for that? Where, where does this idea come from? Tiffany, you want to talk about that? Thank you, JJ, for that question. Yeah, like um, when I first met Felicity, um, I just wanted to do to have a collaboration with her because I've, I thought like her work has been amazing. And I've been a voice for the LGBT community because I'm a part of the LGBT community uh, in, in Japan. And that's how I started my own podcast. And I thought to do more content and also collaborate with, with, with other people that I can work with. And that's when... Uh, Felicity started talking about like, well, how about a documentary, which I never thought about a documentary. And I thought like, oh, that's a great idea. I, but, but through my podcast, I met so many amazing activists and people from the community that we can probably feature on the documentary. So um, I, I, I'm not sure if you remember, JJ, I used to have a YouTube channel too, like where I interview people, but then like it didn't work quite work well. So I focused on more on my podcast, but then when I started meeting Felicity, um, we just thought that, yeah, like, um, that, let's definitely do this because we, we need more voices. We need more representation, especially here in Japan, because um, not many people are vocal about the issues about the LGBTQ plus community. So uh, in your Kickstarter page, you've got a great uh, video. So we've given the link. Everybody can watch that great trailer video. And there you talk about the aims being of the docu-series to inspire, to mm -hmm. share an empathy for diversity in the community, and also to create change, positive change and awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you've already finished episode one and you had a viewing party. Mm -hmm. What has been your learning from doing episode one? Because now you're doing the Kickstarter, trying to do episode two. Uh, how was creating a whole episode one now that you've finished that part? Why don't you start, Tiffany? What was the experience <laughs> on your side? It was so great. Um, actually, um, I, 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 I just realized like how um, I get so empowered whenever I do this kind of work because it's for my, it's for my community. It's for the community. And um, like just sharing all the narratives about um, our stories um, I think it was such a empowering process for me, and also uh, hearing stories that I haven't heard. Like we went to like rural areas in Japan, like in Matsuyama, where um, we get to know how 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 it works there, how how the system goes, or how they're fighting also for for the rights and and uh, um, the legal. Um, what was it, the uh, Felicity, that... Um, the, the partnership program. The partner, yeah, yeah, the partnership, partnership. certificate, yeah. Exactly, the partnership also. And, and it's been amazing that how we got connected with this amazing uh, activist and also politician mm -hmm. in um, Matsuyama where we get to really um, get to know more about, like, mm -hmm. you know, like the issues and all that. And it's just great to have and to know all these people. And... And also, of course, like working with Felicity, being together and brainstorming, doing a lot of work has been so much fun. Yeah, we're great. We're great collaborators. And I was thinking about this last night because we had uh, like a, a late night, like planning session as has become increasingly frequent. And I got off the phone. And I was like, I'm so glad I'm working with Tiffany <laughs> because uh, Tiffany puts in just as much work, if not more. Um, and it's just nice to have somebody who's like your equal, like team member working with you. But to your question, JJ, episode one was a big learning experience for us. Um, I came up to Tokyo one weekend and we went around um, to places that Tiffany used to work. We interviewed Mana Tanaka-san um, and 
it was like, what kind of equipment do we need? How do we get to place to place? What questions are we asking? How do we, what's the format going to look like? And then we, when we went to Matsuyama, again, it's just the two of us, a two person team at that time. Um, you know, we were very lucky. We had Watanabe-san, who is the first transgender councillor, city councillor in Shikoku, uh, because she introduced us to people. So with episode two, because we'll have this budget from uh, all the wonderful supporters through our Kickstarter, we'll be able to hire more people to support us with things like research, translation, uh, reaching out to people, um, you know, have somebody perhaps with me who's a dedicated sound person. So it's not, it's, I can work on the camera, somebody else can be focused on that. Post-production as well, like that's a big part of making a, a good documentary, color grading, sound, etc. So well, there's a, like, I'm so happy we did episode one. We did it ourselves. We funded that completely ourselves. And I, I'm really proud of it. But I know episode two is going to be like that next step up into something a little bit more polished. Uh, so I'm really excited. That's great. Yeah, the watching the the after interviews, after your first showing, and all the positive comments from everybody is so wonderful. Also, seeing a lot of great comments here from Hamish Downey. Hello, um, Hamish. Hamish is such a great supporter. Everything I've ever done, Hamish has always been behind me. So thank you so much, Hamish. And Natasha has even donated a rainbow to us as we're talking. Oh, thank you, love that. <laughs> thank you Natasha. It's amazing. Um, I joined the Kickstarter. I'm happy to be a part of it. Uh, it's really an all or nothing effort. Uh, tell us a little bit about the aims and the deadlines again, Felicity. So the deadline is uh, November 19th, so coming soon. And we're trying to get 1 million yen. The reason for 1 million yen is because the Munakata Foundation came to us and they asked us how much we thought it would, it would cost to make an episode. And we gave them our estimate and they said, okay, well, if you can raise a million yen, we'll give you a million yen. So that really put fire underneath us, uh, right, Tiffany? Like at that point, we were kind of thinking about doing a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding, but everything became a lot clearer at that point. Yeah, we both didn't have the experience of doing crowdfunding and we were not sure if it's gonna work or not. But then like with uh, like what Felicity said, like the Munakata Foundation um, uh, with Mana Tanaka Sang, who's been very, um, very- um, Incredibly supportive. Supportive about like our documentary. She's been part like ever from, from the first episode. So yeah, like it's been such a great um, collaboration and, and you know, like both win-win for all of us. It's such, it's great timing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a lot of guiding since last year and I've had a few uh, same-sex couples. I've had same-sex mm -hmm. families come through, wow. like two moms and kids coming through and then a lot of uh, same-sex uh, men couples mm -hmm. coming through. Mm -hmm. And everybody says how much they love traveling in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, they're having a great time. But I remember something really strongly, the European uh, gay couple, they were talking to me and they said, we feel so lucky mm -hmm. to be alive in this time in the world mm -hmm. that we are even in Europe, we're mm -hmm. more accepted than our parents' generation would have been and how lucky that is. And so Japan is usually, people think of Japan as being like 20 years behind. Let's hope it's not that long because mm -hmm. It does seem like there's more positive momentum. I don't know. Do you guys feel that this is the right time to be doing this this project? I think so. I think that I'm in a very hopeful, optimistic mindset as well, JJ, that it's not going to be too much longer. We're seeing more media reporting on, on LGBT families. At the same time, though, 25% of Japan still doesn't have the partnership certificate. The partnership certificate uh, in itself is a weak protection. It, it is a protection, it is some evidence of a relationship uh, that LGBT couples can use. However, um, it's, sometimes it, it doesn't matter if the family uh, pushes against it, uh, disputes it, it can, it can uh, not be as strong as you might think. So Japan, we're hoping 
is moving towards same-sex uh, recognition of relationships. Uh, a, a politician recently has been talking a little bit more about it positively, so that's that's good. We haven't heard that in Japanese politics. Only, what, five or six years ago, there was a politician in Chiba who was blaming the LGBT for the birth rate declining. Um, no. <laughs> but, but we know same-sex marriage people, couples that have kids, it's yeah. possible. You 100%. know, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, out the realm that they will also be parents, right? And actually, that's a great connection to our second episode, which is on the theme of family. And we're going to be interviewing uh, Bianca, um, who is a transgender parent. Uh, Tiffany, why don't you talk a little bit more about Bianca? Sure, yeah. So um, I got connected with Bianca um, during, um, on my podcast. I interviewed her on my podcast, Breakfast with Tiffany Show. And when she shared her story about, because I've never heard about transgender parenting. And when she shared her story about like how she, she's, ha she's half Filipina, half Japanese. And she was born and raised in the Philippines, but moved to Japan. And then um, eventually um, had her kid and um we don't want to spoil that more like all the details because we want to we want to feature her story on the second episode of the we exist but when i was interviewing her i was just like so amazed and you know like i never i could have never imagined how she will you know she could be a parent and how the struggles and all that especially in japan without you know all this legal rights so i thought that that's one very important thing and um another thing that we really want to focus on the family um, um, topic because I also will share about my family um, living in Japan for I've been here for almost three decades and um, family is such an important thing because a lot of the LGBT community um, we look for our safe space and our safe space are the most important thing and uh, a lot of us are not accepted by our families so um, this is going to be a great topic for our second episode. That sounds so good and so important. Um, I just want to give a shout out to a wonderful local organization here in Hiroshima, uh, Hachidorisha Social Book Cafe. And every month she does an event called Seku Maiba. So talking about ta uh, welcome, uh, friendly, open, safe space for people to come and just share ideas and feelings about sexual minorities. And uh, it's in collaboration with another local organization called Koko Iro. And uh, Aki, Akiba-san, who does, uh, she does such amazing events in Hiroshima Social Book Cafe. And she um, is doing regular peace events. She's a peace activist. But so much of her events at the cafe are really focused on building community. And part of building community and sustainability is inclusion, diversity, and breaking down those barriers of misunderstanding and just getting people in the room together to connect between humans, you know? Mm -hmm. And so she has got this great concept. So um, I hope if you guys have a chance to come to Hiroshima, you'll, you'll have a chance to talk to Abiko-san. She's amazing. That's our goal. Our goal is to come to Hiroshima uh, for the second episode. Uh, so definitely we'll be reaching out. We'd love to connect with with anybody in the community in, in Hiroshima um, in the preparations for our, our next episode. That sounds exciting. I can't wait to be a part of it. Um, let's talk a, a little bit about some of the other key people. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked about Mana Tanaka and her organization, which is matching funds, right? Uh, Tiffany, you've got you've had such a long uh, relationship with Mana Tanaka san. Uh, why don't you talk about her a little bit? Sure. Um, Mana Tanaka san is such an amazing person. I also met her through my podcast, and um, she was. Um, oh, I actually met Mana Tanaka san. By the way, JJ, she's a common friend. When I was in Fuji Japan um, on the board. Um, with Jackie. So Jackie told me how amazing um, Mana tanaka -san is and her story. So I got to interview her on my podcast and we had two hours of interview and I met her in person during COVID. And hearing all her her work and the foundation that she does, helping people from um, 
the um, third world countries. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it was such an inspiring um, like activism and also the advocacy works that she's been doing with that organization as well. And then um, we we got more connected, of course, because she's based in Tokyo. And then she introduced me to the amazing organization for um, Toastmasters, where um, focused on LGBT community. Um, LGBTQ plus community, and um, I was looking for a place where I can, you know, hone my skills in public speaking and being a leader. And then she connected me there, and because she's she's one of the first to really or, um, organize and and form that club, and I became the president of that community. And then she was just so happy, like how everything, like you know, just connects. And and then like when we started our documentary, um, we told her about it, and she's just like so open and so like sure i will you know not not even hesitating like let me think about it you know like she's just like every time like we uh, we ask her about something like she's just been generous about her time and and sharing her work yeah she's so cool she's one of the coolest people i know (laughs) she's so smart but at the same time down to earth and funny and just um just generous like tiffany said so we're so lucky to have a connection with Manatanaka-san. And here you have Manatanaka-san and Hiroyuki Watanabe. Can you introduce about Hiroyuki Watanabe? How did- yes, Watanabe-san's the best. So Watanabe-san is a city councillor of uh, Matsuyama City in Ehime Prefecture. And she became the city councillor during COVID because she was a small business owner, she was a bar owner, and she was seeing the impact that the COVID restrictions, uh, especially on like drinking establishments was having. So that was her initial platform that she ran on. But when she got into uh, her position as an openly transgender woman, uh, she became this this role model, this pillar of the community. People would come to her and say, you know, I." I'm part of the LGBT community, I have these concerns. And so she has taken them up and her real advocacy is the partnership certificate, which is not even uh, available in Ehime at the moment, which is really which is really concerning, uh, that, that one protection. And what Tanabe-san is so like, again, very generous, knows a lot of people. Whenever, when I first went to meet her uh, before we, decided on the interview. Um, she was already like, oh, you should meet Budi-san, who is one of the interviewees. You should talk to this person. Uh, so thanks to Watanabe-san, we met people. And Watanabe-san's also been part of like the premiere screening in Tokyo and our recent online screening. So very supportive um, person. Yeah, I will add to that that I really got connected with Watanabe Sang, because she also w- used to work as a sh- as a as a cabaret performer in um in Matsuyama and and I used to be a cabaret performer as well here in Tokyo. So and what's so funny is like when we sh- there's this one person that she knows that I know that I used to work with. So we were like it's, it was just like all these connections has been amazing. Mm-hmm. I imagine there would be some small world so subculture. It is a small world, yeah. <laughs> Have you have you found that that so, once you connect to certain people, it just like adds on? Oh, you just meet people all over the place, right? Exactly, exactly. I it's imagine. it's not a big community. Like again, um, the people, L- especially LGBT people in Japan. That's why it's, that's why it's also it's so challenging to meet them mm. because they're not that. There's no not a, not much exposure for them, so. Um, there are people who's been vocal on their social medias, but in reality, like like even Watanabe-san, we didn't know about her. And, and and when we know about her work, then we were just so amazed about how um, not just being um, working in, in, in Matsuyama, being a counselor, but she's also really working for the LGBT community and mm-hmm. making, you know, for the partnership that she's been really working hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one of one of the themes that I think is so important that I've seen in the snippets coming out of the work you're doing for We Exist Japan is the idea that it's not just about Tokyo, that it's about outside Tokyo. It's mm-hmm. about support in the rural areas. Can you talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, sure. That is a huge part of, of this documentary is that balance between the two parts of Japan. Uh, when we recently showed We Exist in Tokyo, one of the comments that we, we were hearing from the Japanese community is that they were learning about the experience of uh, being LGBT in countryside Japan. Um, so I, I, I personally think it's a really big part and that it was part of the inspiration of the documentary as well. Uh, when I went to Tokushima and I was talking to, to an older Japanese person and she was expressing some very strong negative views against the LGBT and it really hit home how hard it must be um, to be gay or be queer in, in these communities where conservative mindsets still exist, where being the oldest son is still a huge deal. Um, I think I think it's a really different world to Tokyo or Osaka, and it's important to show that. What do you think, Tiffany? Luke? Yeah, like um, the... Um... Sorry, well, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got... Like, what was the question again? <laughs> Well, just just how um, the reaction and right. I'll give one example. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talked to Accessible Japan's Josh Grisdale, and mm -hmm. this is about wheelchair accessibility, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. I think there's some common strains here. So he said, once you start making places wheelchair accessible, mm -hmm. it's also accessible for elderly Japanese people. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. also accessible for women and parents who are pushing strollers with kids in it. Mm -hmm. So I imagine the kind of work you're doing with We Exist Japan, the kinds of conversations raising awareness, it, mm -hmm. is, happen it is having positive knock-on effects to issues about women having equal uh, workplace experiences or or life i mean in the government right now they're talking about whether women should be allowed to keep their own name or choose mm -hmm. to keep their own name mm -hmm. in the same time as they're talking about allowing same-sex marriage mm -hmm. so these kinds of conversations often they support each other it's better for everyone if we allow more protections yeah. Safe places, right? So, so what we really noticed, um, so we did a lot of interviews uh, on public, like strangers on the streets, and we did it in both in Tokyo and in the rural areas. And what we really noticed a lot is people in the rural areas also like they they tend to really not know about the LGBT community at all. In Tokyo, you you kind of sense that they're like, oh yeah, we know them. I know, I know. I, but in the rural areas, they have no idea what LGBT, what what the meaning of LGBT is, which which was um, uh, the realization for me. What the big realization for me is it's not even about tolerance because in the Philippines, it's more about tolerance for the LGBT community. In Japan, it's more an ignorance. So they don't have they don't know nothing. They don't educate themselves about all these society issues. So I think. Yeah, like it's very important to you know share stories, and if you're part of the LGBT community, and you're listening, share your story, and that's what we're doing with we exist as well. Yeah, such a good point, and it's not just people in the LGBTQ. I get all those letters mixed up. I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. um, but it's not just if you're in that community or if you identify, but if you support and you. <laughs> also from the outside even or from realizing and accepting as someone who doesn't identify that way that is still very important part of the process right 100 percent. allies are a big part of the community a big part of um the support structure um allies can be so active uh mana tanaka -san told me recently at the nagoya pride festival um, there was this woman who was, who was waving the flag really strongly um, and she's an ally. I think that there has to be a lot of um, space and a lot of uh, recognition of everybody's work towards building awareness, as Tiffany was saying, um, so that we can all better understand each other, build that empathy that we're talking about. Absolutely. And I, I think, like I said before, uh, once you start building more acceptance and the idea that people are different and that's mm. okay. Yeah. yeah. Just the idea that it, it expands uh, once you start 
Mm -hmm. having a mindset of inclusion and having a mindset that not everyone is the same. And as we are developing more of an international community in Japan, more diversity of how we think about how everyone should live, how everyone should be, how everyone should look, mm -hmm. this is very healthy as we're moving forward, right? 100%. Uh, let's continue talking about the music. Martin Leroux, tell us about him. Oh, uh, Martin's the best. Um, Martin is a close friend of mine. We met a long time ago when we both, uh, when I lived in Ibaraki Prefecture and he uh, would come visit um, his partner at that time. And Martin is the most beautiful singer songwriter. Oh my God. When we had the online screening the other night, right, Tiffany? How did people react? <laughs> they were just done with how. I mean, I know, I, I also met Martin before even knowing that Felicity knows Martin too. Um, I, I, we were like, oh, we both know Martin. Like, it was just like small world that how we know Martin. Because mm -hmm. Martin, I used to do a lot of events in Tokyo and I, I, hand, I used to run this bar in Ginza. Where it has like a very nice, you know, like luxury atmosphere. And when I met Martin, I thought like, your voice is amazing. I think you should sing, sing at the bar and do some acoustic, you know. And then he just brought his guitar and then like play music. And it was so amazing. And that's how I really fell in love with his work. And then knowing that later on that Felicity was working with him. And then it just came up like, oh, we don't have any song for the documentary. What about like reaching out for Martin? And then when Felicity reached out to Martin, that's how it all started. And yeah, it was just a perfect song also for the documentary. It was Find the Light. It's mm -hmm. one of it's part of his um, his back catalog, I suppose. Uh, he he'd already written and produced it, um, but when we both listened to it, it was just like this is perfect for the documentary. I cried. I cried when I heard that song that finding the light. Yeah. Yeah. I cried. I cried during the online screening. I was mm -hmm. so shocked at just how beautiful it was. And I think it was at the perfect point in the evening as well. Like we'd had the kind of opening remarks and we were settling in to watch the documentary and then this profound song played and we all just kind of went, whoa, okay. I'm in the mindset now for the documentary. That's awesome. And I think as a filmmaker, Felicity, you know how important having original music is. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, filmmakers and creators, if you use other people's music, even if you share copyright or something, sometimes later on you're trying to sell what mm -hmm. you've made and mm -hmm. it becomes very complicated, right? Mm -hmm. So having original score mm -hmm. as part of your original product is a really key part of it, right? It is. Um, compared with 10 years ago, there's a lot more available. Uh, there, there are websites now called, uh, where you can actually find really high quality, royalty free tracks. But for episode two, because we'll, we'll have this budget, we're actually in talks with a film composer. So we'll have like, you know, more ambient music. Uh, again, we just want to connect with the community a little bit more. Um, and Martin, of course, will be a big part of that going forward as well. That's fantastic. That's great to hear. I know, Tiffany, you've been a DJ for many years, so music <laughs> is also very important to you as well, right? Yes, very important. And um, music connects to people, you know? Like, I mean, of mm -hmm. course, sharing stories is very important, and storytelling is such an important part of the documentary. But, yeah, like, I think... Um, the song finding the light when you hear it and and the documentary it just connects and it's connect with mm -hmm. people now another part of your kickstarter story is how you can be a part of history by supporting this project anybody want to talk a little bit about that i think it connects with what you were talking about before jj like where are we in the journey towards representation in japan um at the moment Again, I feel hopeful that it's not that far away, but when I speak with uh, Japanese members of the LGBTQ community, sometimes I don't get that sense of like optimism because there is such a low level of un understanding and awareness, um, particularly in schools, um, because schools 
anywhere in the world have this very like uh, rigid mindset of the box that students should be in. LGBT queer students that don't fit in that box really struggle. And that's very true here in Japan as well, especially in middle school, uh, where children are really finding their identities um, because there's so little awareness, even amongst teachers, you know, that that support network just doesn't exist. So being part of history, uh, even if we exist, is just a small part of that, that growth of awareness and understanding, I think it is important going forward. Absolutely. Tiffany, anything you want to add? Um, that's so great. Uh, by the way, to Felicity, I completely agree. And um, I just remembered while well, Felicity was saying that when we were having a discussion with Mana Sang, Mana Tanaka Sang, and uh, she, she was saying, I, I was saying, like, it was like 20, like, it takes 20, like what you said, JJ, earlier, 20 years to, you know, to finally, like, have that approval, have that legal rights that we're fighting for. Um, but Mana Sang said that it's been quite faster now like uh probably like we just have to wait 10 years <laughs> not 20 years anymore so um hope we're hoping that because of all this um social media like the work that we're doing um um raising more people being representing and talking about the narratives i think let's hope that we can make it into much more faster than 10 years and i think it's possible so that's why we wanted to be part everyone to be part of this because I think I feel like it's not, it's not going to be that long and I think you know it's just how it's just probably going to be soon so being a part of the documentary is one thing that people can be contrib contribute to the community and I think that developing that idea that it's always something we're going to keep having to work on that it's not like, okay, we're there, done, finished, right? It's like all things sustainability. We have to keep reassessing where we are, how we can improve, not going back to, you know, knee-jerk reactions and bringing ideas or laws back, which we are seeing happening around the world as well. So this is like some something we want to develop strategies for so that we can keep moving forward. Right. Yeah. Not not just there is not an end goal, no. but this is how we want to keep improving. These are the the ways that we see kind of a positive path forward, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Right. Definitely. I think we can't be too complacent, as you said, like uh, even in, uh, you know, I'm Australian and uh, even in the States, we see people. There's this flow back and forth. And, and if you get too complacent, you can lose rights that you've worked hard to gain. Um, and I, coming back to Japan, you know, sometimes when I've spoken with, you know, when I first pitched this, this series to NHK, one of the comments I got back was like, well, everybody knows about, everybody knows about the LGBT, what it, why is this news? And I could imagine that uh, maybe somebody in Australia might feel that way, you know, because over the past 20 years, we've had so much uh in the media and a build towards this understanding uh, and you may feel that there's that we've reached some kind of like goal but when you dig a little bit below the surface and i would say this is true for australia as well um i don't know how much people really do understand about the queer experience how much people uh know about what everyday struggles or challenges the lgbtq has on top of just you know the everyday of being a human being challenges so yeah you're right we it's something we just have to keep on reminding ourselves of and, and talking about and, and sharing stories about yeah absolutely a great comment here from natasha so true in canada we're going backwards many people are fighting to remove sex and gender diversity education in our schools but it has saved lives 100%. Uh, I remember going years ago, uh, taking students, Japanese students to Canada, mm -hmm. and it was the first time I saw gender free or gender less or non gender. I can't remember how the they wiring, turned, maybe but, but, but the restrooms that anybody yeah. could do, right? Ah, yeah. And and I heard from uh, local people in the LGBTQ community saying how freeing that was you know and and i would try to use it too you know and it was uncomfortable at first because you're like 
okay, everybody's, wow, the layout's different, you know, so it's because it's new, everybody has that sense of like apprehension, but once you get used to it, mm -hmm. you know, and then it, it was so, I felt so good about it. And I felt like, wow, this is something that everybody can do, you know, like this is a small step, but meaningful step, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks for that, Natasha. That was great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how you're going to use the funds. Uh, you were very clear about this on the Kickstarter page. Yeah, exactly. So our biggest growth in uh, has been our team members. We've had a lot of people come on board uh, as volunteers, people who've volunteered their time to film the screenings, for example. We have a wonderful videographer in Tokyo. Um, translators who've gone through all of our different documents, um, you know, people who are working in marketing. We have uh, Narelle who's been helping with, with our Kickstarter and she's just, you know, she's working so hard. And everyone, including myself and Tiffany, are just putting our time in for free because we're just, we're just keep trying to keep our documentary alive and keep it going. So paying people is a big goal. And then on top of that, um, production, you know, hotels, trains, uh, food while we're, you know, in Hiroshima uh, or Osaka, that's going to be a big, big part of it. And uh, the post-production, like the, the music, the composer, uh, color grading, all of those things. So, yeah, documentaries are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hopefully it's something you make with really high quality and can be seen and enjoyed and mm -hmm. learned from for many, many years, right? That's the idea. That's definitely the goal, yeah. We wanna make something, uh, and it's been really validating to have so many nice comments about episode one. Um, you know, Mana Tanaka-san, you know, she was just like, it turned out way better than I thought. And I was just like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, you've had experience making a, a whole film, mm. right? So uh. you've you've had experience of how to create quality. You can actually, people can download that and, and mm. watch it on professional level. So we're so yeah. lucky to have people like you who are willing to do these projects, Felicity. It's uh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, making a documentary, making a feature film, the basic foundation of both of them is just the story. And so even though a lot of the nuts and bolts, uh, like organization, the way you you actually structure making a film is quite different. Um, when when it came to sitting down with the footage that we took, it like Tiffany and I were like talking about it, like what's the story? And how do we go from Tokyo to, uh, to Ehime? And then we spent three days in Tokyo recently together planning out episode two and really thinking about the kind of stories and how to structure the stories. And episode three, if we get to make an episode three, like it's, it's, it's storytelling at the basis. Yeah. That's great. So you've, you finished episode one, episode yep. two is what your Kickstarter funds are for. So there is, I heard you say it and I heard Felice, uh, Tiffany say it in the preview as well. If we have extra money or more donations in the Kickstarter, that will fund episode three or what, what's your, what's your thinking? What's your vision? What would be the ideal, like 10 episodes or five or 50, 500, what are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going as long as you keep finding but, stories. But, is that but, it? The, but the thing is like, th this is these narratives are so important that again, if we don't get to have so many representation and vocal about like, you know, like if, if you, if you, if you, kind of, if you Google people who's doing documentary about LGBT, but I don't think someone's doing it. So, I think what we really we, we we just came up with the idea because of the first episode, how the result and the feedback from people and comment from people how it's really filling. And again, like it goes back to every time I do the interviews, I just felt empowered from all these people people that we interview. Then I get inspired of the work that we we I can I can probably do more. And I think this um, documentary when, when when me and Felicity like sometimes we brainstorm we thought that this can be a continuous thing like every year we can 
released one episode and again like did, re- doing a documentary is not many people probably think like maybe this you know it's a lot of work it took us one year to release the first episode so um it's a lot of work but after this first episode we learned a lot and uh, it's a learning process but um i think there's more stories i think that needs to be heard and we need to do that work i guess so yeah we we could go on we've already talked uh about it could expand beyond japan mm-hmm. you know we'd love to do a season in japan uh i'm not sure how many episodes but like maybe six to ten uh we'd love to see different parts of japan um i mean there's so many great places we could it could go on forever but definitely i mean japan is not the only country where the lgbt community struggles to have a voice um so there's been light kind of discussions I'm not really going to go into too much detail yet but we're, we're kind of yeah hoping that that could be a possibility in the future that's exciting it is, um, yeah. so series the episode one um that you've already finished uh was focused on you said relationship no mm-hmm. episode two is oh Family. number one is relationships and partnership certificate and family is episode two. Is mm-hmm. that right? That's right. Yeah. That's exciting and very important issues. So if somebody joins the Kickstarter, mm-hmm. can they watch episode one already? Is it available somewhere? It's not available online yet. We're going to have lots of screenings. Um, and a lot of those are in Japan at the moment, but we'll be aiming to have more uh, ones in other countries. Uh, we're in the fes- film festival circuit. Uh, but if they get the at the anything over 3,000 yen, they will get access to the links. So episode one link and when we finish episode two. So that that can be a good way to, to, to watch it and enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's just over about twenty US dollars at the moment with the great exchange. And actually, we're getting a lot. Yeah, we're getting a lot of um, backers um, per, uh, selecting the that reward, like you know, access to first it's episode and second episode. Popular, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a great way to do it. I love that. Uh, another great, important uh, comment from Natasha. It's important to tell our own stories mm-hmm. instead of always being someone from the outside the community. Yeah. That's so important. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking about the importance of allies, of course, but when you talk about your own stories, of course, you want to be it, coming from within the community. And that's that's what you're doing so well, Tiffany, with all these wonderful interviews, right? Yes, um, it's been inspiring to hear different stories from not just in japan but also like my podcast is you know like i interviewed people from uk from from the states from australia from different places so it's been really inspiring and also you gain information like what we've discussed earlier about the um so, uh, the, like what Felicity said earlier about like in, in the us and you know like in canada even like they're taking all this back but then we don't even have it yet in japan you know so um I think, yeah, like um, hearing stories from them, mm-hmm. it inspires us to what we can do in order for us to achieve what they achieved. Yeah, for sure. Um, I love watching you guys with your updates on social media here. <laughs> You're traveling around the country together by train. And I want, I love this picture because your beautiful smiles, but also your reusable water canister thank you so much for reducing plastic waste yes very important i always yes. i always have my, my own. i'm looking around for mine at the moment so i never much. buy i never buy like those um pet bottles but, you know like the in- <laughs> my, my giant let's, one let's all keep asking you know it's yeah. hard to fill up in japan still but you gotta you gotta try and right? also jj i would say i always bring my own chopsticks too Yes, good. She does, yeah. Bring, bring your own chopsticks, your own water, uh, refill. Echo, and an echo bag, an echo bag. Echo yes. bag, and always ask, can I have this without the plastic? Or mm-hmm. can I just eat this here? Or can I get a mug? You know, you, so, there's lots simple. of little hacks. Yeah. Um, use My Mizu, the app, to mm, find where to fill up. amazing, yeah. There's, even Google is starting to show where we can fill up now. So, no way. Yeah. I, I always enter a nice water refill spot, so you can too. Yeah, that's a good tip. Why, 
That's why I always love watching your show, JJ, because I always get to learn a lot about sustainability. And you, you've been doing such amazing work for, for sustainability in Japan. So, oh, yeah. thank you. But it's not, I mean, that's why I mentioned it, because it's not just about the environment. It's about people. It's about mm. the economy. It all ties in together. It all works connected. together beautifully, mm -hmm. right? Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Uh, we have about less than 10 minutes left. We've had a great discussion. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all the work you're doing. Uh, activism, starting something new, creativity, film, media, content creation. Anything we haven't touched on yet that you really want to mention? I really appreciate Natasha's comment about the, the film festival because that's something that we're looking into. Um, so I've copied that so i'll definitely be looking into that one oh that's that's awesome yeah very important international collaboration uh have you also pitched the idea or shown episode one to netflix or one of the majors that maybe might back you <laughs> and a future international version of what you're doing right i actually actually said that during our first um uh, documentary pre uh, uh, premiere screening in Tokyo. That my go our goal is to be on Netflix. <laughs> we want to be on Netflix. So if you know anyone, if anyone watching here on the JJ, uh, JJ show, uh, Six Sustainable Japan, if you know anyone from Netflix or even um, any platform that you think that uh -huh. you know can we can put our our this documentary, the docu series, we will appreciate it. And we, it, and I think we we need more um, connections. Um, we've been using our connections, but it's also good to know. Mm -hmm. um, other people's connections. Absolutely. Exactly. And just community groups in general, um, coming back mm -hmm. to the Kickstarter, um, if anybody has suggestions about an interested group that might uh, might want to support a Kickstarter like us, uh, one of my friends, uh, she works for a company and they have like a section for LGBT uh, support and uh, encouragement within her company. And so she's forwarded it to them. Um, so any groups that we just may not know about, please like reach out to us on our Facebook um, uh, or our Instagram, I think is probably the best way we exist, Instagram. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, Tiffany's on LinkedIn. Uh, be part of our community. That would just be so helpful for us. That's fantastic. And even watching this episode, learning about this project, sharing the video with others. Absolutely. Liking, yeah. subscribing, you know. Yeah. Felicity, you've got great uh, short blurbs from the next episode, from the last episode. So if people like and share those videos as well to actually see the content that you've been creating and what's what's upcoming. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany, you also talking about it on your podcast, I imagine. I absolutely do. Every <laughs> time. <Yeah. laughs> Not just on my podcast, I on my all my social media platforms. I definitely use um, my voice and sharing the information about the documentary. And any other podcasters out there, if you'd like to interview yes, Felicity please. and Tiffany, they are mm -hmm. fantastic guests, like mm -hmm. you see now. <laughs> so reach out and yes, uh, there's lots of ways to support right so many ways so many ways to support um yeah all of the the sharing uh putting it on 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 linkedin putting it on instagram um some people have written personal like their own little personal introductions to to what we've been doing which is is just so great that people are taking that extra step that extra amount of time uh we appreciate that so much I think that makes a big difference, it right? Does, yeah. Uh, especially to their followers. Now, it looks like you got a big group of support. Uh, was this after the showing of episode one? Yeah. Um, that's the day that we were, <laughs> Felicity couldn't make it, like, uh, on, the, on our first screening in Tokyo. I but, got sick. Yeah, but we were so um, grateful for all the people's support. And I think it was, it was a balance between the, um, people from the community and also the allies they really they both came it was a uh, balance between both that they really supported and not not just uh, that first premiere screening and also we did another screening in Tokyo 
with a different community which is part of the uh, who's doing such an incredible work with a community called Waifu and Iwakan. They're, they, they're, they have an amazing organization in Tokyo um, where they wanted us to screen the, our, our, our um, documentary. And then when we did also the online thing, we were just like, we never expected that so many people would turn and, and do like be, be on the online for, for the screening. And it was such a successful um, event that we did. And that was the first time, but it, all these are first, but it was, it's been great and amazing. That's awesome. I'll, I'll put that link below. Thanks, Felicity. Um, but also, one of the other ideas I think we haven't touched on yet was about, we talked about it's not just Tokyo, but mm -hmm. one of the things in the trailer that you were talking about uh, is a lot of people have the image that these issues are only for abroad. They're mm -hmm. not, they don't concern Japan, but they definitely do. And that's one of the impetuses of this whole series, right? You want to talk on that for a minute? Yeah, that's like recently we've been connected with um, elderly Japanese uh, members of the queer community. So that was at a time where, you know, you just really couldn't talk even to your family uh, at all. Uh, so the idea that Japan doesn't have its own LGBT, its own queer community, um, I think it's I think it's convenient for politicians, but it's definitely not it's definitely not the case. You must have come across uh, like a generational shift, Tiffany, in all your years uh, living and working here in different segments of society, right? Yes, yes. Um, it's, it's there's so much changes, and but but the thing is, like I also learn like. For example, that community, the wife of community, I actually met them. I actually went to their party last year, and that's how I get to know the people. And it was so surprising to me that I didn't know anyone in that community, but a majority of them are very young. And um, I told myself that I'm, I I need this I need this community to know about me before the release of the documentary, so then we can share this documentary. And for some reason, like one, the, organiz the organizer herself came to the premiere screening in Tokyo. And then she was just like so surprised by the, 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 doc the documentary that we made that she wanted this to be on their, or on their party, on their organization to screen. So I think, yeah, like it's just like, I don't know, like so many amazing connections. It's just like, we were always like blown away with like all like this because I think it's not just the people that we know, it's also what we attract because we need these stories to be heard. So I think, I really think that we're doing good for the community. Yeah, and and to be grateful for the path that they have beaten to make it easier for this generation too, right? A hundred percent, that's so true. And you see that even, um, you see that in Australia as well. And, and recently on Netflix, a wonderful series came out um oh why can't i remember it's one of my favorites uh anyway it's a beautiful drama about two young like high school boys who fall in love and a lot of the comments from older lgbt have this bit of sweetness to it like i'm so happy that this exists but why wasn't it there for me you know um and yeah we have to respect the struggles that those came who came before us have and we hope that they feel appreciated for mm -hmm. their struggles which make it a little bit easier hopefully for the future generations right exactly yeah well that is our time thank you both so much it, it seemed to thank go you. by very quickly uh but maybe after the release of episode two we can have you back we that can talk amazing. about what's next then. That would be so much fun. Thank you so much, JJ. Like all your support, giving us this platform, um, being there for the long run. Thank you so much. Pleasure, my Thank my pleasure. I'm Thank so you so glad much, I JJ. Out. Yeah, you've been you've been incredibly inspiring to me. Like doing your work also. So thank you so much for doing what you do. Right back at you, both of you. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining. Such great comments and supportive suggestions. Wonderful 
to have you with us today. And if you're watching a replay, you can always write your comments and questions below and we will definitely respond. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks, Hamish.